Hey, welcome to Arizona Living with Rob Scribner. Let's get started. Hi guys and welcome to Outdoor Travel Channel. And today I'm uh, Arizona Living, which is a series we're doing. I want to talk about boating. And you go, Arizona and boating? And it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a little different than say when you live up north. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my boat, but there's a lot of people usually get boats that are sports boats. Uh, mine's a cruiser, and so uh, <laughs> this is what I do, but a, a lot of people do different things with their boat. Typically they'll have a 18 to 24 foot boat that usually is uh, designed for skiing and pulling tubes and stuff like that. Mine is designed to be able to sleep in and it does have the power to pull skis and stuff like that because it's a twin screw. So what I thought I'd show you is um, I store mine on the side of the house but some people put them in storage and mine's on a trailer luckily and so this is a 2800 Maxim SCR uh, with extended swim step and it's a twin screw so it's got to be pretty beefy trailer and so uh, the big things around here is um, because of the temperatures and stuff you got to constantly watch your tires and make sure your equipment's lubricated and things like that. I always want to check your ropes and stuff because the temperatures and the heat will disintegrate uh, your ties and stuff like that. So it's a little windy today so sorry about the breeze. So I uh, thought I'd show you a little bit about why we use a boat like this. So let me get by my uh, my pump here. <laughs> Be a little quieter. So as you can see, this is a twin screw, and uh, these are Bra Bravo twos. Uh, they have stainless steel. You wouldn't believe it, they're, uh, but they're stainless steel props, and a very very large swim step, as you can see. And uh, usually during the winter is when we work on it or do things to it. So. Uh, we bought this in Washington State and actually brought it all the way down here. And uh, uh, I thought I'd just kind of show you some of the things we, we're going to been doing to it and what we plan to do with it and what other people do with their cruisers. Okay, so we're up in the boat now. And so this year, um, since a lot of people have their boats as kind of something they constantly work on, I just had new canvases installed in the boat. So you can see these. Uh, brand new. I mean, this is like the second day that it's been out and uh, Came out really good. It costs about $1,400 to have new canvases made just to give you an idea and uh, um, This year we uh, Pretty much just tuned up the engine uh, Had to change a water pump for the sinks and stuff like that put new um, fuel filters in and then this year, in a month from now, I'm having the outdrives pulled and check all the um, bellows to make sure I'm, I have some water getting in the belge. I got a feeling it's coming from there. So they say you should service your outdrives once a year. So it's time. So this boat is designed for cruising, which is, uh, you know, not the insane stuff with high speed boats and stuff like that. but. Um, we take our boat up to Lake Powell and the reason we like that is one it's a very large large lake and it's got 180 miles of shoreline so uh, it's a lot of lake I'll never see the whole lake we like it because uh, we can bring uh, the grandkids up or things like that spend the day where you take the boat into any cove and almost feel like you got your own cove you back your boat in uh, I use three anchors, a main anchor and two side anchors, hold the boat in place and then I got a giant sw swim platform, I have a dinghy and motor that the kids can go play with and spend the day on the beach, which is you know, what we call a beach, and uh, the kids can have uh, great adventures, very relaxing and uh, so, oh, so a general idea is uh, uh, well, let me take you inside and we'll I'll talk more about what it costs to uh, keep a boat up in Lake Powell. All right, so we're in the inside of our boat. Our boat has uh, a place to sleep up front. Um, this actually here could be a bed if I wanted it to. 
but it's just me and Sherry. And then we have a bed in the back. And usually a boat that's sitting in the yard, your tools are everywhere and stuff until you're ready to take it out. So I'll give you a general idea. Some people are wake weekend warriors with their boats. So, uh, you know, they'll be on the trailer and they just uh, pay for whatever it costs to launch the boats. Uh, for us, because it's such a pain to move this boat, uh, we moor it. So typically it costs about three ninety-five plus or minus ten uh, per month to leave it in a, a space, whether it's Lake Sororo or Lake Pleasant or uh, like us, we'd like to take it to Lake Powell. So basically four hundred a month, which you know it's pretty penny, but uh, just don't go to the casino. <laughs> that pays for it right there. So. Uh, yeah, so we like this because then we can just drive up in a normal car uh, and we have a place to stay. We don't have to pay for motels or anything. Uh, we have pretty much everything we want. All the marinas uh, usually have restaurants and showers and all kinds of stuff to do. So, uh, of course, we're up in, when we go, it's up by Page. So, uh, yeah, it's just plenty of things to do. Nice place to sleep. Um, nice uh everybody's usually pretty friendly and uh yeah and even if you go up there and it's too windy or the weather's bad it's still a really nice day um uh to go spend time if you can't go out on the water go spend time go look at grand canyon or something so yeah um so yeah boats aren't cheap uh and the older you get the harder it seems like it is but uh uh, we enjoy our boat a lot. We got a good deal on it. We don't. I'm. I used to be a fishing boat kind of guy. I used to have an aluminum boat. Used to do salmon fishing and halibut fishing, all that stuff. So to own a boat like this was kind of unusual to me. But I gotta admit, it's really fun. Uh, it's really relaxing, and uh, um, you know, uh, it takes a little while if you buy a used boat to get it tweaked in the way you want it. Uh, that's kind of what me and Sherry've been going through, and so. Uh, uh, you know, you got to take and <laughs> having two engines in a boat like this, there's hardly any room to move around in the engine room. So uh, uh, it's hard to work on this boat. But anyway, that's a general idea of what we do in Arizona with boats. Like I said, a lot of people just have the sports boats, and so they'll just take them up for the weekends. Uh, ours is a cruiser, so we take ours up for long periods of time. And then uh, when the season starts cooling down, it gets colder up in Page. We pull the boat, put it back on the trailer, bring it on the side of the house, and we store it here. Some people can't store RVs. There's a lot of houses you can't store RVs or boats on the side of your house. So typically they will store their boat in a storage area. So anyway, I hope that was helpful, and I, I appreciate you watching Arizona Living. And uh, we'll catch you next time with a new subject. Talk to you later. Bye. So before I let you go, I thought I'd show you a few pictures of Lake Powell and uh, what it looks like up there. Uh, lots of boats, beautiful lake, lots of scenery, great place to go. So someday you get a chance to go visit Lake Powell, check them out. Thank you so much for watching the Arizona Living Series, and I hope someday you get yourself a boat. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We'd really appreciate it. Till next time, bye.